Good morning! Welcome to Lemon Juice for the Soul. This is our regular vitamin for our soul. This morning, we I would like to read verses from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. It read, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. As they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to live for Galilee and they will see me there. Jesus has risen from the grave. Jesus is risen. There was a story published by a leadership magazine. It's about little Philip, born with Down syndrome. He attended a third grade Sunday school class with several eight-year-old boys and girls. Typical, uh, typical of that age, the children did not readily accept Philip with his differences. According to an article in Leadership Magazine, but because of the creative teacher, they began to care about Philip and accept him as part of the group, though not fully. The Sunday after Easter, the teacher brought little plastic eggs. So it's a little plastic egg containers. Each receiving one, the children will told, were told to go outside on that lovely spring day. And then outside, find some symbol for new life and put it in the egg-like container. And then they have to go back to the classroom. And then they would share their new life symbols, opening the containers one by one in a surprise fashion. So after running about the church property in a wild confusion, the students returned to the classroom and placed the containers on the table. Surrounded by the children, the teacher began to open them one by one. So each one, whether a flower or a butterfly or a leaf, the class would oh and ah. Then one was opened, revealing nothing inside. The children exclaim, that's stupid. That's not fair. Somebody didn't do their assignment. And then Philip raised his hand, spoke up, and said, that's mine. That's mine. 
And then one of the students said, Philip, you don't ever do things right. There's nothing in there. And then Philip insisted, I did it right. I did it right. It's empty. With a smile. And then Philip continued, The tomb was empty. Jesus is risen. Silence followed. From then, from then on, Philip became a full member of the class. He died not long after from an infection most normal children would have struggled of. At the funeral, his class of eight years old marched up to the altar, not with flowers, but with their school teacher, each to lay on it an empty plastic egg, remembering his genius project that he submitted an empty egg, explaining to the class that the empty tomb is not stupid, that the empty tomb is actually an expression of victory, that an empty tomb is telling to the whole world, Jesus is risen. There's a lot of kings who live, became successful, became popular, and died and remained dead. There's a lot of good people, politicians, leaders, writers, authors, somebody who claimed great, they all died and remained dead. Though Jesus, the only man who claimed to become, who claimed to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the Son of God, he also died. But he did not remain dead. He rose from the grave. The empty tomb shows it. Are you following a dead leader? Are you following a, de a dead Savior? Follow Jesus because He rose from the dead. The empty tomb says it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending your only son. He died on the cross. And that is not defeat. But that is the victory. Because he rose on the grave after three days. He is our Savior who can pay for all our sins. Because he paid it with, her li with his life. He is the Son of God. And he proves it by rising from the dead. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Because we have heard the gospel, the good news of Jesus. And because of that, we put our faith on what he did on the cross. And we have a living Savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father. This is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Good morning!